Council of Chalcedon was a very important event in church history. It was the fourth ecumenical council because there was lots of Christological disputes. Is what do we mean when we say Jesus is God? And what the council declares is that Jesus is fully God and he is fully man. This is the orthodox view. Now, a lot of people get confused because there are some people who go by Oriental Orthodox. But Orthodox means correct belief. But the Orientals do not have the correct belief. So they are not orthodox. Orthodox position is to accept Chalcedon, which teaches diophysitism, versus the Orientals, those who reject Chalcedon, teach neophysitism. The Orientals are the Ethiopians, the Coptics, the Armenians. We have not been in communion since the 400s. They only accept three ecumenical councils. And the Catholic Church and Orthodox Church agree on this because we were one church when this happened. So for the most part, Catholics believe in diophysitism. And because of Protestants, came from the Catholics. They believe in diaphysitism for the most part, but the Catholic Church, they do have some Oriental Catholics because again, it's just about submitting to the Pope. But I'm bringing up this issue because I want people to come to the truth. If you really do love someone, you will tell them the truth and help them bring them to the true church. And there are some other problems with practices. They, there are some Judaizing practices, but I think the best way to refute this is to bring in the expert. Quickly respond to this and one of the arguments that i will i will make against and this is kind of like a popular argument you see from saint maximus the confessor in leon to jerusalem is just asking okay if christ is one nature is this nature created or is it uncreated mm -hmm. if it is created it's not divine if it's uncreated it's not human if it's both there's a problem here because one thing in and of itself cannot simultaneously be created or uncreated at the same time right it must have to, there it one is a different kind of a property from the other that corresponds to the nature. So by saying both, you're saying Christ has two natures. And at that point, yeah. you're basically saying, okay, the Orthodox are correct. <laughs> we are wrong. Right? So that's, that's, that's kind of, that doesn't really help you. And it, and it goes to the, the activities of Christ. It goes to the wills of Christ. One of the things that people don't know is that, it, that one of the reasons why the Tomb of Leo was so heavily criticized by the monophysites is not just because it speaks about two natures, but it also speaks about the properties of the two natures. So, for example, the property will be like the property of the divine nature will be that it's incorporeal, that it's uncreated, right? Mm -hmm. And he's and Saint Leo speaks about that, and Saint Leo also speaks about there being two activities of the of the natures that are cooperating with each other, and that's a key point as well because they're in unison, right? But he says that there are two activities, meaning that there are two energies, meaning that there are also two wills. And the Manavsa Dioscorus and Severus of Antioch, they say this is one of the reasons why the Chalcedonians are heretics. So it's not just one nature, but they also believe that Christ has one will, that he has one mind, and he has one energy or activity. Mm -hmm. And one, one historical instance that shows you the problem with this is John Askutsangis and John Philopman. And this is recorded by Michael the Syrian, I believe. Uh, this is talked about in... Johannes Zuckerberg's book on the rise of the rise of Christian theology and the, and the end of ancient metaphysics. He talks about this. And John Alskutsang's main point was that if all a person is, is just a particular instantiation of a nature and nothing else, and it's basically a particular nature, then the Trinity being three persons with three particular natures, meaning that there are three gods. And there wasn't any good sufficient response to this because he's just you know, logically following the conclusion of monophysite Christology and working into Trinitarian theology. Mm -hmm. And once people realize this, a lot of monophysites, in fact, converted to Orthodox Christianity at that time. This is noted by their own historians, right? Their own yeah. monophysite. I think Michael, well, in this case, is an, is an Armenian. I might be wrong, but he notes, he's a 12th century historian, notes that a lot of people from the Syriac and the Coptic communion, in fact, became Chalcedonian because they realized the connection between Christology and Trinitarian theology. And that if you say that Christ is one nature, you have to say that the Trinity is three natures then and that the, the three gods and your whole theology is just upended. And so when you note these things, and these are, I will say, somewhat simple things. I, I don't think they're super simple, but they're <laughs> yeah. somewhat simple. Once people understand these points, they will realize the logic behind um, the orthodoxy of the church fathers and also this idea that uh, we were just saying the same thing. <laughs> Usually it's from ignorant people and from bad-willed people, right? Yeah. And the people that can't think beyond the slogans. Mm -hmm. And you have to kind of think of it, of, of it this way, right? You're basically saying that the Holy Spirit could not <laughs> ful fulfill the Pentecostal mission because if a language barrier can cause a schism that lasts for centuries, and it's just a language barrier that's the cause of it, 
Well, then you're basically saying that the Holy Spirit could not unite the different people of different languages together. It's a denial of Pentecost yeah. at the end of the day. Mm -hmm. So this kind of thinking doesn't really, it doesn't really, it's, a, it's an atheistic kind of thinking. It's a, it's a historical materialist kind of a, kind of a thinking. It's not the kind of a thinking that we should have as Orthodox Christians, I don't think. Believe the same things, and why don't they just accept all those councils? But they aren't accepting those councils because we do believe different things. And like bringing up this issue, it's a disfavor to them to say, oh, this actually isn't an issue because then they aren't actually joining the church versus your videos have helped bring a lot of, you know, Oriental people to the true faith instead of validating their false beliefs. You know, we should give the, you know, we should give them a good uneasiness. Like they're not where they should be. They should be, um, you know, in the church and like we have a lot of videos on it and, um, that, that's why you, you know, filled that niche because you saw it. I, I saw someone jokingly say, what Oriental Orthodox person hurt you where you had to make all this, this entire like playlist and everything. But no, it's because, you know, these theological issues do matter a lot. And because of that, you have an entire playlist. You've debated these issues. And this theology is relevant. Like I, I was at Vesper Saturday night and we were like chanting this theology about, you know, the two natures not mixed and there is a tendency especially in america for ecumenism and to say oh these you know oriental versus eastern orthodox you know we're ba we're basically the same it's false but it's very prideful of us to think that you know all these saints who fought against these issues you know they're actually wrong you know we we got to figure it out that is very prideful that's the exact opposite of orthodoxy especially since it's more than that i mean the the people the oriental orthodox they only accept four councils like so much has gone on uh since that the motivation first of all like it's not it's not really well there's two main there's one there's two main motivations mm -hmm. well two main things that i want to note. not motivations but two things i want to note about my motivations so-called yeah. the first thing is that um if this was about my personal like or dislike towards um orientals or cops and syriacs i will actually be saying positive things about them because from my like personal you know family friends and people i know um i've you know i had good experiences with them yeah. right i don't have any negative experiences in person online it's it's a different story but it's mostly from <laughs> yeah. people you know online you can find anything right it's, exactly. it's not really yeah. much of a good reason mm -hmm. but the second thing i want to note is what really motivated me about this is that i saw a lot of people online a lot of orientals online um, saying a lot of inflammatory statements about our faith and, and making a, lo a lot of these claims and arguments. And I know as I was trying to find the answers to these things, right, I noticed, you know, as different from like with Roman Catholicism, atheism, I could find answers easily. But with this, yeah. I couldn't find any answers at all, right? Mm -hmm. um, you Because I, I noticed that what they say is very different from the basic uh, surface level stuff that you see online a lot, right? Yeah. I read a lot of different art articles from various different websites, including websites that a lot of people respect. Um, and there wasn't any answer, really any answer at all. Uh, yeah. It was just like, oh, monophysics is bad because they believe there's a mixture. Well, they claim there's not a mixture. So how do you answer that? Well, there's nothing, for example, right? Or they have their specific formula or model. They have their own way of reading St. Kirill of Alexandria. And it seems pretty close to what you know, he seems to say the same things that they're saying on a surface level. How do we respond to these things? There's your answer at all. So what I had to do is I first read uh, the book on St. Kirill of Alexandria by Father John McGuckin to kind of first get an idea about the conflict between the story of St. Kirill and what happened afterwards in the first place. That book isn't even, isn't even about monophysics. It's about Nestorianism. Yeah. Then I started to read several other materials that... Um, I make note of some of my videos, right? I kind of talk about the various different books that I've read on this topic. And then I started, re I, I start to read their own saints and theologians. And I started to realize, okay, um, some of the things they say, uh, they're kind of hiding, right? They're, like they're kind of hiding what they really believe. So for example, some monophysite articles will say, like, like contemporary ones online today, they will say they believe that Christ is divine and a human will, right? Like divine will and a human will, for example. Mm -hmm. Um, that's not true. wrong. Uh, they don't believe that. Severus of Antioch explicitly denies there being two wills in Christ. He says there's a one divine human composite will. That's very different from what we believe. Yeah. We believe Christ being human and divine has two natures and he has faculties proper to the two natures. He has a human will and he has a divine will, for example, right? So mm -hmm. he has two wills just like he has two natures. 
so there's a big difference there as well moreover with with like nature like what it means um there's kind of like this different system different theological system uh, that they have where they think that a person all a person is is a particular nature whereas we as orthodox we make a distinction between nature and person this yeah. is very key for the trinity because in trinity there's one nature three persons whereas in monophysitism really a person is just a particular nature right and if there are two natures in christ that means there are two particular natures meaning there are two persons this is why it results in nestorianism this is why they say you know in order to not be in a storm you have to say there there has to be one nature right so there is this mm. kind of dialectic within this position due to their inability to make a distinction between nature and person and confusing the two categories whereas we make the distinction and because we make the distinction we avoid this dialectic and we can say that just like in the trinity there is three divine persons of one nature in christ there is one divine person there's one divine jesus christ but there are two natures in christ the divine nature and human nature mm -hmm. So that's like on a basic level that kind of is one of the answers that you can use on on this perspective but another thing about the ecumenism point that i want to make uh, i want to point out a lot of people point out the joint agreement that was signed in 1990s mm -hmm. um, i made a video responding to that as well yeah. there's a lot of things that i have to respond to that's why <laughs> there's a massive playlist it's not because i was yeah. mad or anything like this because there's a lot of things to respond to right yeah. i don't want to leave anything <laughs> out in the open and one of the things that I pointed out is that, well, this isn't really a serious theological document. It doesn't even, it makes statements that are contradictory to monophysitism, really. And it's not really followed as, as if it's some kind of like a dogma or some kind of like a guideline. It's just a couple of theologians gathered together and say, we, yeah. you know, we superficially make the same slogans. And that's the big problem with a lot of heretics is that they think about slogans, right? <laughs> yeah. In their minds, they just have a bunch of slogans, fill the open, right? Or one nature of the, of, of yeah. the word incarnate or like these like slogans and they seek those slogans in the fathers and then they pick them out and they make their whole theology around it without like ignoring all of these things that were said before and after those slogans yeah and that's a big mistake that i see both from roman catholics and from protestants and from monophysite all heretics make this problem right like protestants make the uh started doing this recently with faith alone they see St. John Chrysip says, we're justified by faith alone. But this means sola fide. <laughs> yeah. It, it means something completely different because uh -huh. for St. John Chrysip, for example, faith that works through love is what justifies you. That's not faith alone. Right? Mm -hmm. That's not faith alone in the Protestant sense. It's yeah. the same thing with the one incarnate nature. Well, for example, the one nature that is incarnate, well, it's enfleshed with the human nature. So maybe it might be speaking about two natures, for example. Right. So thinking in these in these slogans don't help you. The distinction of the two natures after the hypostatic union and, and things of that nature but that's how i will say nestorianism is related to this controversy as well um a lot of monophysite polemics was it was motivated by a lot of nestorian argumentation at the end of the day and what you will hear from a lot of monophysite apologists today online apologists is that they will say for example oh okay you believe that the virgin mary is the mother of god but here are these nestorian people they also believe that but they were still nestorian right or you say that you know god you know suffered on the cross okay but nestorians can still say that and what they try to do is basically say well you have to say things in a way that a nestorian will not say and they're saying well the only way you can avoid being nestorian is by saying that christ is one nature <laughs> but, uh, that's a really a, a false way of making an argument and in fact um, if you question the Christological system of the Nestorian, even though he might verbally agree with this, with several formulas, the essence of the formulas will be still different. So, for example, with the Mother of God, why is Virgin Mary the Mother of God? Well, they will say, well, it's just kind of like this external acknowledgement, right? It's, it doesn't really have any internal reality. It's not, it's not really based on anything real. Whereas we will say, well, the Virgin Mary is the Mother of God because she gave birth to the Word of God. The, mm -hmm. the person who is God himself, right? Yeah. Uh, so they still don't make that nature person distinction, mm -hmm. right? So that's how you will ascertain the Nestorians, not by some slogans, right? And that, again, the sloganic thinking <laughs> of the various different heretics is, yeah. is, is how you have these stupid heresies occur um, mm -hmm. in still to this day. Mm -hmm.